uh, I am Nicolas Fortané. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a sociologist uh, specialized in animal health practices and policies, uh, working uh, for the French Institute uh, for uh, Food, Agriculture and Environmental Research uh, in RAE. Uh, and I'm based in, in Paris, uh, Paris Dauphine University. Basically, so uh, I'm gonna try to to keep it relatively short here to to catch up a little bit with our, with our agenda. But uh, some facts first. Uh, okay, we 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 are a 2020 project. Uh, we started uh, about a year ago, a bit more than a year ago, uh, and in this project for uh, four years, uh, we have about six millions uh, of euro. We have a consortium of uh, 17 partners. Uh, and research activities are, are, are being undertaken in, in 10 countries, uh, including two low and middle uh, income countries. So you're going to see that uh, in, a, in, in the next slides, uh, which countries are, are involved, like, uh, I mean, in terms of field work and research activities. And as I said, um, INRAE is, is coordinating uh, this project, but of course, it's a very collective uh, endeavor and it wouldn't work without the, the contribution of all the members of the consortium and in particular the executive committee that is going to present uh, more deeply the content of the project. So basically the, the goal that we are trying to, to achieve here uh, is uh, probably the, the one that you share with us, like fostering transitions uh, toward prudent use of um, antimicrobial. And the, the project, and basically this is what I'm going to, to present here, is going to, to give you like a broad overview of how the, the project has been conceived and structured uh, and not giving you too many details of, of the content of its work packages and, and, um, and pillars. But basically the, 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 the project is organized uh, around three main uh, pillars or activities. Um, the first one uh, being understanding the drivers of antimicrobial use in various contexts. And this is uh, the, the, the project, which is the part of the project, which is uh, based really on social sciences and economics. So basically, uh, we want to understand and analyze and predict uh, the behaviors of the stakeholders and the influence of the regulatory system in the way antimicrobials are used uh, in these various contexts. Uh, and of course, we also want to understand the knowledge, practices, motivations, uh, of what we call here the animal health professionals. Uh, I mean here the farmers, uh, the vets, of course, some technical advisors, basically all the, the actors that are having a very important role at the farm level. So basically this pillar one is, is, is meant to articulate analysis at the farm level, but also broader understanding of the, of the food system, um, so to say. The second pillar, which is uh, the heart basically of our uh, multi actor slash participative approach, uh, is, is designed in a way that we want to co develop strategies to encourage, again, prudent antimicrobial use. So, both focusing on, on technical tools, innovations, and, and some of you uh, have already uh, pointed out, um, you know, I'm just thinking about breeding, feeding vaccination or any kind of other technical uh, innovation that, that, that can help us to reduce uh, antimicrobial use, but also behavioral change was, uh, was pointed out uh, in, in several of your, of your pre presentation. And that's very important. And that doesn't, according to us, only require uh, raising awareness, uh, but also really engaging uh, with the actors and, and supporting their, their the strategies and so on to, to reduce antimicrobial use. So basically this is what we want to do in this pillar too. And, and also, as I was saying, that involves as well, uh, socioeconomic and policy instruments that, 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 that can be uh, fostered and encouraged. And the last pillar or the last two pillars basically uh, are about in assessment and impact of everything that we would have studied uh, in the end. So both the socioeconomic analysis and, and the participatory kind of approaches or strategy that we want to implement within the project will be evaluated so that we can build and design and co-design, should I say, uh, transition scenarios or transition pathways um, towards uh, this brilliant use of antimicrobial use. And, and of course, uh, that relies on, on quite a lot of communication and engagement strategies. And, and of course, uh, this the meeting of today uh, is, is part of that. Um, just to 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 make it short, but you know, I don't want to 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 go into too, too many 
let's say scientific details but uh, as you will understand uh, or you already have understand this this, this project I, I believe is quite innovative uh, compared to what we could have done uh, in in this field in, in other projects because uh, of course it, it is interdisciplinary and it is uh, multi-actor slash participative but uh, there is a quite an important role of uh, what we call the social sciences so sociology and economics to to be to be very short and they, these approaches have really uh, conceptually structured or design i guess uh, the project and and that's what make it uh, quite original and, and hopefully um, effective and productive uh, i hope but uh, so very quickly i think what is important here is that we have an approach in terms both of systems and transitions so which means that we are really focusing on structural change or systematic uh, change rather than only individual or behavioral change and and this notion of multi-level transitions um really uh, help us or or, or, or or makes us uh, focusing not just on technical innovation but also social and economic uh, uh, and including also policy uh, innovation because we really think this is how we can address this more uh, structural systemic uh, level of change and transition um basically to to yeah uh, that's what i was saying here but uh, that's project driven by interdisciplinary research and multi-actor approaches so all the social sciences but of course as well animal and veterinary sciences and the stakeholders uh, expertise as we are a, a multi-actor uh, project so very quickly here you can see the structure of the project and what i have shown before how it is responding to to each other but again uh, this first pillar are really based on this this approach of the food supply chain basically so of course there is a focus at the farm level the production change but we really want to understand how the the, the other uh, layers should i say of the of the whole um, food supply chain are influencing uh, the decision of the of the stakeholders which are operating at the farm level so really it's a, it's a systematic approach once again, uh, that we want to implement in the first uh, pillar based on, on sociology and economics and management studies. The, the second pillar, as I said, uh, really will be based on this concept of uh, living labs. And it's, it is going, I'm not going, uh, going to go into too much details here, but again, the heart of, of our uh, multi acre slash participative approaches, we're going to have all these interactive meetings, which uh, are going to last for the next two to three years, where the researchers uh, of the consortium, of course, are going really to interact with uh, farm level actors, industry actors, policy level actors, and so on to, to really try to support, encourage and engage uh, transitions. And uh, yeah, basically the, the, this concept of transition uh, or transition pathways or scenarios that we really want to implement uh, at the right at the end of the project uh, in, a, in a way to, to, to design uh, recommendations is based on, I know that this, um, this graph is not very pretty, but it's a very, very famous graph from the literature of uh, transition studies that is trying to understand and to show the, the different uh, factors, basically, that we really need to focus on if we want to, to foster and encourage uh, change at the, at the large level. So, of course, you have niche innovation that are coming from the field, and, and this is something that we want to encourage, especially in the, in the pillar two, but you also have all these transitions that have to be led by technology, policy, industry, the market, and user preferences and so on and of course the science but really uh, just to, to show to show you quickly and, and I'm sure that at the end of the project we're going to come up with a more uh, specific uh, transition kind of graph uh, that, that can apply to AMR change or AMU change but but this one is um, is quite uh, well known in, in transition studies and of course as I said uh, we, we finish with our uh, communication uh, strategy so just the last slide um, before I, uh, I give the, the floor to, to our work package leaders. But as I said, this project is uh, really based on, on field work uh, in different kind of contexts. So we have 10 countries uh, uh, where uh, research activities and, and multi actor kind of approaches and activities are, are going to be or are already um, undertaken. So uh, Belgium, Denmark, France, Italy, Netherlands, Sweden, 
Switzerland and UK for the European countries, but also we have uh, Vietnam and, and, and Mozambique, so an African and an Asian country, uh, because we, we do believe that AMR, uh, of course, is a, is a global global issue. As you can see, we have different kind of sectors uh, where we, we, we are really trying to, um, to work with. And we have kind of, um, not separated but categorized uh, our different case studies in three main clusters uh, with that we call intensive systems, alternative systems or marginal systems. Uh, if you have questions of course uh, I, 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 I will give you more detail on that but the, the idea here is, is really based uh, on the assumption that uh, there is not necessarily or there is no one-size-fits-all uh, solution or one-way solution for for um, for reducing and, and, and antimicrobial use or promoting prudent use. Uh, context matters, uh, local practices, knowledge, interactions matter, and and and, and of course as well the, the production system, the farming system matters. So we really think that uh, the idea is to to adapt and and, and, and co-construct transition passwords and, and scenarios that can work uh, and, and that can be accepted um, by the by the actors on the field. And this is why uh, basically you have this uh, this kind of matrix here, which is really the the way uh, which really represents the way that the project is operating and and again uh, as i was saying like the, the idea uh, of having all these case studies working together not necessarily in the sense of a comparison but in cross learning uh, is to to really understand how uh, all these various agri food systems can also be entangled and interact and and learn from each other in the end even if uh, probably solutions will have to be tailored and adapted to to various uh, contexts